Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm here today with a card that I designed for the Crafters Castle Challenge blog. Our sponsor is Tailor Made Cards for You. The project kit that I'm using is called Return to Sender. I have a photo here of the actual kit. It has several different pages that you can download. It's a digital kit with a lot of ephemera and really beautiful vintage papers and I'm going to go through each page individually in my video but this gives you an idea of what it looks like again this is a digital kit made available for from Taylor made cards for you the digital kit has four pages and on those four pages you'll find various different papers that are vintage style as well as ephemera this page has a collage at the top with po postcards and then it also has a sort of telegraph style label. This page has sort of some book pages at the top as well as labels that say special handling, special delivery, return to sender, and a cute vintage image at the bottom. And there's also a to and from label. page that I'm flipping now has two different vintage pages. The one looks like a stationery. It says my darling at the top as if somebody was writing a letter. It has a little calendar in the corner and the other looks like a collage of various different letters as well as some little labels that say airmail. love the colors of this page with the, all the reds and the final page contains small images that you can enlarge for your needs um, including this really cute um, mailman I thought that was adorable here I'm showing again the other two pages that are in the kit And I slowed this down a little bit so you can get a good look at these pages. While I'm doing this, I am going to let you know that there's a link below in the description box for the Crafters Castle Challenge Blog, which is a monthly challenge blog. The theme is Anything Goes. The prize is are open internationally as well as U.S. The idea on the Crafters Castle Challenge Blog is that it is for all types of crafts and all skill levels. There's a prize every month sponsored by Taylor Made Cards for You. Check out the Crafters Castle Challenge blog so that you can see what the prize is this month. And again, this is Return to Sender, and there's a link below for this kit, as well as a link to Taylor Made Cards for You. This page contains that collage of different postcards, which I'd use in my project, as well as the telegraph label, which I also use in my project. And this page, I guess you would call it ephemera, but you could certainly edit these in your computer and make them focal points of your cards or projects. Um, there's nothing stopping you from being creative and making these items any size that you would need to be included in your project. Lots of great possibilities with this kit. Some of the images on this last page, which stand out to me, include the Western Union telegram blanks. So it looks like it's a cover from a pack of telegram blanks. And then there's two different mailmen on this page. This guy is delivering a letter and the other one is putting the letters in the mailbox. Lots of great images that you can use and you can edit them on your computer to make them the size that you need.
So for my project, I created a trifold card, which reminds me of a stack of letters on top of each other tied together with a piece of string. That reminded me of the mail and return to sender being um, something that you would see in the mail. But my card opens up accordion style, you can see here, and it is layered on top of my card base. And it opens up and you can use the inside as well for decorating with the images in this kit. But I really like the feature of how it ties shut and you can use any kind of string or ribbon that you'd like, but this is just a piece of twine. And it just reminds me of several letters stacked on top of each other and tied together. So for my card that I'm demonstrating, I have some Tim Holtz paper and I picked this greenish color. Well, it looks like leather. I know it's hard to see in the video, but it's got a nice, um, you know, deep tone. My original card that I made sort of was a lighter color and I wanted there to be more contrast in my project. So I picked this darker color. Now this is an important piece of the project and it is a 12 by 12 piece of paper. Now I'm going to cut this to five by 11. And I have here my trimmer as well as a piece that I cut out earlier and it is five by 11. So I go ahead and I trim off one inch since this is 12 by 12 I'm just going to trim off an inch once I get everything lined up here and perfect okay so we've got that cut down okay now that we've got our inch removed we're going to measure this and cut it down to five inches I have a template here that I was using and I'm just double checking my work to make sure I have the right measurements which I do because this is being trimmed five by 11. This is an important section of our card. This is the section that looks like an accordion um, sits on top of the card base and it needs to be scored in order to get that accordion effect. So I have it on my scoreboard and I'm going to use my stylus. You can use a bone folder as well, whatever tool that you like to use to score your paper. My first score mark is at one and a half. My second is at three inches. And again, this is just my little template. I'm just using it to make sure that I'm scoring at the right part, the right section. So this is three inches and then five and a half. This one is the most difficult for me to score because it's where my scoreboard folds in half. And again, I'm just checking my measurements and then the final one is at eight. So this is at eight inches. So one and a half, three, five and a half, and eight. Just going back in with a bone folder, especially at this five and a half mark where I have a crease in my board where it folds and I just want to make sure I get that scored, scored well. All right, now I'm just going to crease this section. And while I'm doing this, I want to mention that if you look in the description box below, you're going to find links to the other design team members videos. And I would encourage you to check those out for more information. And also for inspiration. It's um, very interesting every month to see what people create, considering that we're all given the same digital kit to work with. And it really is interesting because everybody makes something unique. 
I'm just taking my bone folder and scoring that so that we have nice crisp folds. And again, this is the little accordion section that sits on top of the card base. And this is the section that folds out and basically is why this card is called a triple fold out card. I have one more line that I need to score here. And the paper stands up nicely. That is how it's going to be on top of the card base. You can see there creates the accordion with the triple fold and this section will be decorated with papers from the kit. Okay, now that I have my accordion section done, I'm going to grab another piece of the paper from that Tim Holtz pack. This is a real nice plaid and it matches perfectly with the accordion fold section, obviously, because these papers come from the same pad. And this is going to be our card base. This is going to be just a normal sized A2 card base. Eight and a half by five and a half would be my trim size. Once I have it trimmed to eight and a half by five and a half, I would fold it in half and crease it, and that's going to give me my base. Yes, it is a traditional A2 size card with measurements of four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm just getting it trimmed up here to the right size. I love this plaid pattern. I think it's really super masculine and it matches really well, obviously with the um, accordion fold because it's from the same paper pack. I think it looks really nice and I'm going to be next putting some of the pattern paper that came with this set on the card base. This is a cream colored card and it has the sort of the airmail red, white, and blue stripe all around it. I'm just trimming it with my guillotine trimmer. I love my guillotine trimmer. It really is great for getting nice close cuts when trimming things such as this. Now I'm taking the other pattern paper that's in this. This is that collage, sort of postcard collage, I would call it, um, piece of paper. And this will be trimmed to go and tuck inside the folds of the accordion piece. And so what I'm doing is each piece will be four and three quarters long. The first piece is four and three quarters by two and three fourth. The second piece is four and three quarters by two and one fourth. The first piece you see I put it there on that first fold. That first piece is four and three quarters by two and three fourths. Second piece that I just tucked in is four and three quarters by two and one fourth. And this next piece will be four and three quarters by one. And that will lay on top of the final fold of the accordion. So you're just basically tucking in some paper inside the folds. I have this cute telegraph note card that I'm going to adhere to the inside of my card. So this is where the person who is sending the card could write a little note. And I think it's super cute and it goes very well with the theme. I'm zooming in a little bit here. You see I have that sort of airmail piece already glued down to my card base. And now I'm just gluing these panels into the tucks of the accordion fold. Gives you a better look at how nice this paper is. It just has really cute like postmarks on it and stamps. And this gets glued to the card base. And then I'm going to put an acrylic block on top of that to give it some weight, hold it down so that it sticks. 
this is my sentiment. It says adventure. And this die is from Gemini. What I have here are sticky grid dots. They're basically adhesive sticky sheets. And what I'm doing is putting my sentiment inside and then burnishing it with my hand. And then slowly I will peel the sentiment off and then stick it to my shadow. This has been a really nice product that I have discovered through Scrapbooking Made Simple. It's really great for this type of sentiment. Now I'm going to pop my sentiment up on foam dots, but what I'm going to do first is figure out what kind of little tag I want to put inside my folds. I was going to go with special delivery, but then I changed my mind and went with the stamps because I think with it being um, the canceled postcards inside, I thought the stamps went very well. You could easily decorate all of these little panels with whatever tags you would like. And here I'm putting the foam dots on my sentiment leaving a gap in the middle because that's where the string's going to go. It's going to go under the sentiment. You don't have to use the sentiment. This word adventure I thought went very well. I, I put it with um, black shadow and rose gold foil cardstock. I'm trying to figure out what ribbon to use. I, at first I grabbed this really cute sort of tan with red and blue stars ribbon. I like it because it matches so well with that airmail theme. But in the end, I do pick a different ribbon. And by the way, when you do cut your ribbon, you'll want it to be about 18 inches. So what I actually end up going with is the little stamps, putting them inside That's that fold so that they peek out a little bit and they can be seen from the top. Not Basically, they're not, they're not tucked all the way under you know, they stick out just a little bit. The one stamp is blue and the other is maroon. And I end up going with this baker's twine that's blue and white instead of the ribbon. Partially because I had a trouble tying that ribbon. Um, the baker's twine is so much easier to tie. I have a list here of words. This came from a card kit a while ago. I um, do not know the brand of these words, but I picked out the, the word the traveler. Thank you for watching my video today. I hope you like the cards that I made. I really think my second card is a standout. I like the way that the colors all tie together. Here it is with the accordion unfolded. I actually made this a landscape card. The first card was more of a portrait card, but you'll see here how that baker's twine came together and tied those colors, I think, together very well. Thanks again for watching and um, don't forget to check out the Crafters Castle Challenge blog and enter your project for a chance to win a free digital kit from TaylorMade Cards for You. And don't forget there's a discount code in the links below in the description box if you would like to order any digital items from TaylorMade Cards for You. Thanks again everybody. Have a hopeful day. Bye-bye.